Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. So season seven is finally launching tomorrow. And for those that haven't heard yet, we are getting one new map, two weapons and a launcher. And of course the new battle pass at the beginning of the season. So all of this is available tomorrow. And then later on in the season, we get an, a third weapon, an LMG, a stealth bomber and the stadium map remastered. So those are the things everybody gets. But now let's jump into the patch notes because this time there's actually put out patch notes that are worth going over and actually change up the meta and I actually have to say this time around those are some really good patch notes and I'm a bit surprised because I thought DICE couldn't really patch the game properly but with those notes they sound really exciting and they will refresh the game a ton so that's a really positive change they're making here and I'm happy about it. But well what's changing? Let's start with the first one a lot of outrage was online about and I also made a video about it. We are getting the new visual weapon recoil. Some people that were in like this EA creator program that could already test the new map they uploaded some gameplay and stuff from what i could see there the visual recoil didn't seem to look that bad but honestly i have to play it so i can't really give an opinion on this but at least from the looks of it it's not as bad as they made it sound online now the next thing they are changing is something a lot of people has asked for a long time and that's we get headshot multiplayer rebalancing and of course i have to say this up front even though this will slow the ttk down in close quarters eng engagements this is not a TTK overhaul like we had back in Battlefield 5 where suddenly all the guns felt like pea shooters. No, this is really just touching headshots. And well, what is the current problem with headshots? Currently we have the problem that assault rifle and LMGs have a headshot multiplier of 2.15, meaning that I think mo every LMG and most of the assault rifles can actually two tap you in the head on a certain distance, making obviously for not a so fun gameplay since getting two tapped in the head is so fast that you literally have no chance to react. And on the other sides, we have SMGs where we ha only have a headshot multiplier of 1.25 currently, where this basically means going for headshots is absolutely useless on almost every SMG because if you need four shots to kill with an SMG with 1.25 headshot multiplier, you need to hit three headshots in a row to get even a benefit and kill faster than if you were to just hit body shots and since hitting headshots takes a lot more skill than just hitting the body it was never really worth it and so they are making some changes now the first thing they are doing is they actually increase the smg's headshot multiplier from 1.25 to 1.55 meaning that now with an smg you only need two headshots in a row to make the headshots actually worth it and give you a better ttk instead of the three you needed before that's really nice and on the other side for ARs and LMGs they are reducing the headshot multiplier from 2.15 down to 1.9 meaning you can no longer two tap people with ARs and LMGs in close range meaning now these guns will take a bit more time to kill the enemy but this will also bring those guns more in line with SMGs and the rest because if you were to have really good headshot aim with ARs or LMGs there was no reason for you to play SMGs in close range since you would just out damage the SMGs with your AR and LMGs. So that's a really nice change. I'm happy that this is finally happening. And of course, I will also don't think this will give us like a super hard SMG meta because AR still do more damage basically per shot. But I think it's a nice change. It lifts SMGs up a bit more. So skill on SMGs is rewarded a bit more by tuning down ARs and LMGs and also removing the frustration of getting two shot. So the next thing they are changing is actually about vehicles and they finally acknowledge that that vehicles are not really having a good time in Battlefield 2042 because there's so much anti-vehicle stuff. So a few of the changes are for one, Casper's drone no longer has the EMP effect. So it's just for spotting. Then the next thing they are doing is they are removing one C5 from the Assault and the Recon class. Meaning if you play Assault, you only have two C5s now and the same for the Recon. While you as an engineer, you still have access to three C5s, but you also get a new rocket or one rocket more as an engineer. And with this, they are really trying to push that the engineer is there to take out vehicles and the rest of the team is just there to support. Of course, I'm not sure how I think about those changes because as an assault, yes, I mean, it was probably not that fun for a tank to just get grappled on by McKay. He throws 3C5 and then boom, your tank is gone. But on the other hand, I have so many matches where people are just not taking care of vehicles. And well, it's usually the case that with a rocket launcher, you're not dealing enough DPS if you alone try to take out a vehicle that you can 
actually kill a tank because most of the time the tank just retreats so you have to basically one shot a tank usually with either c5 or coordinating with other people so that all your rockets hit the tank at the same time roughly and now with this change yeah i'm not sure if it's that healthy but we will see of course people that uh, usually get blown up by c5 from the assault because most assaults use c5 and i'm guilty of this too more to like clean up groups of enemies instead of actually going for tanks those people will be happy but yeah we will see about this change the next thing they're doing is the first person sensitivity on ground turret vehicles so this basically means when you ride a tank there is a disconnect between how fast you can like move around your mouse or your controller and, ch and change your vision when you are like in third person and you always have your barrel like um, being a bit delayed so to say that it takes some more time to go to where you are looking and this is only when you are like unzoomed because once you go into zoom mode in tanks your sensitivity will actually match and now they try to change it so that even if you don't zoom your tank barrel will now go a bit faster but they also said this will not be a hundred percent so there's a speed cap so so technically speaking if you were to set your sensitivity to 100 you couldn't just like 360 all the time and your barrel would completely follow you there would be a point where your barrel would lag behind basically and all those changes affect every ground vehicle except the mkv dor now for some other changes they made first of all i won't go over over like bug fixes i will of course put you the link to the patch in the description so if you're interested in like bug fix and stuff you can read it for yourself but for progression you will now get squad wipe xp so if you kill the last remaining member of a squad and you wipe the squad you will get, now get xp rewarded for this i thought this was in the game already but apparently not so that's a nice addition now some more changes first of all the vertical spotting distance of the tux is being decreased that's a good change i think because i think on some maps especially in redacted you had a problem where you could basically place attacks down in the tunnels and it would still spot people <coughs> upstairs and this i think it was a bit game, game breaking especially on redacted because you were basically spotted all the time as was thrown no longer emps as i said now another change anti-tank mines now take two seconds before they activate and attack vehicles meaning currently it is like that an anti-tank mine can be basically used as a c5 where you just arm it throw it at the tank and it explodes immediately this will no longer happen another thing they fixed this incendiary grenades thrown through smoke will no longer be disabled as they haven't yet started burning um this is something that surprised me because i always thought that you throw a incendiary grenade through smoke grenade if it touches the ground where the smoke is obviously it doesn't like go off and you don't take damage but if it just flies through smokes and hits an area where there's no smoke then it should burn normally but apparently that was not the case and the smoke grenade basically functioned as an a aps against incendiary grenades but they, they fixed it so that's what basically some general changes but now they actually made some more weapon changes and here i think this is actually very interesting so first of all smgs not only got a headshot damage buff but they also got increased movement speed via ads so you have now 10 percent more movement speed on the k30 the mp9 the p90 and the ac9 and five percent more movement speed on the pp2000 and the pbx i like those changes especially the 10 percent more movement speed for the k30 mp9 p90 and ac9 because you basically never never see those guns run and 5% for the pp2000 and ppx is understandable i think i see the pp2000 sometimes and the ppx also sometimes but i also think the ppx is super strong already so 5% more movement speed might actually be my new favorite smg even though i still think the pp29 is still the best smg in the game now you also get improved hip fire accuracy for the p90 k30 mp9 ac9 and aks 70 for you then to bring dispersion reset when bursting in line with other smgs is now a bit faster on the ac9 and p90 so if you play ac9 or p90 if you shoot over range you will now feel that your gun will be a bit more accurate when you burst they increase the bullet speed for the or basically the battlefield 3 portal gun so the aks 74 up 90 and pp2000 i never really played this guns but i don't think the bullet speed was so slow that they needed to increase i think the gun like other things so they increased the bullet speed for the portal guns but they decreased the bullet speed for the pp29 by roughly 10 percent so from 520 down to 450 i think now the pp29 has the same bullet speed as the k30 but i'm not sure they reduced dispersion by 10 percent for the lmgs m240b m60 e4 and the type 88 they buffed the m5a3 because they changed the dispersion a bit so you should have around 10 percent more accuracy of the m5a3 and now some actual number nerves when it comes to damage so i said in the beginning that they reduced the headshot multiplier on a 
ARs and LMGs because they wanted that those guns can no longer two shot to the head but there are still some guns in the game at least currently that if they don't receive a damage nerf they can still do headshot kill enemies and that's guns that deal 28 base damage but this actually just didn't skip them so, but did something for them and that's here so they reduce the CQC damage for LMGs and their ARs from 28 down to 26 to reduce the occurrence of two shot headshots this affects the SFAR, the AK-24, the LCMG, the RPT-31, the M60E4, the M24B, the AC-42, ARM-68, GEV-46 and the ACWR. So with those changes, no gun in the game except Maxman Rifles can now two shot you in the head in close range, what is very nice. Then they realigned the iron sights on the MP9, PP2000, AM40, PKP and VHX. Not really that much of a change because everybody's running a scope anyway. And then some more fixes they made, but now we actually get some more changes. So they reduced the damage on the AC-42 from 26 to 25 per bullet on high power standard issue and subsonic ammo. They reduce the range damage on standard issue subsonic high power also. And with those changes, I think the AC-42 is even worse now because to one burst with the AC-42, I think you now need to hit two headshots and one body shot to even get like the three hit burst kill. So I think nobody will play the AC-42. Now a change that really makes me sad, but I can understand. They finally nerfed the G-57. In my weapon guide for G-57, I basically said the gun for a pistol is super broken because you deal 28 damage with one bullet and with the headshot multiplier this basically means you can two tap people in the head with the g57 or if you just body shoot you would need like four shots now they change the damage from 28 to 24 meaning not only can you no longer two tap people in the head with the gun but you also need five bullets to kill instead of four meaning your ttk is a bit slower i think this actually balances the gun properly but doesn't like make the gun completely completely useless since if you need like four shots or five shots that's still two bursts you need to fire anyways the only thing you now have is you can no longer two tap people in that and you need your burst to land all three bullets in the head for you to one burst somebody so i think that's a nice change this won't destroy the gun and make every other gun better it's just more in line for the mp28 they reduce the damage from 28 to 24 between 13 and 74 meters basically meaning you can now no longer two tap people in the head once you shoot at 30 30 to 74 meters what is a fine change in my opinion with the pf51 they increased the hip fire accuracy by 30 percent but reduced the ads accuracy by minus 15 i don't know i don't see the pf51 used anywhere anyway so i don't think this is like a crazy change then they also increased the hip fire accuracy of 30 percent by the m93r this i also have to say i never see the pistol so i don't know if a lot of people will suddenly start playing it just because it got a hip fire increase and now something that's super funny i just made a 12m auto guide and now in this change they are nerfing the 12m auto so they basically make it that when you equip the short barrel attachment your pellets dispersion will increase by 25 percent horizontally reducing its effectiveness at range and one-on-one -on -one engagements and yes it's a nice nerf so you will probably need one or two shots more on range now to get the same like kills you could get got before easily but i still wish they would like either reduce the fire rate of the gun or the damage a bit but we will see how it plays. Another change they are making is for body armor. So the body armor gadget will now add extra protection against buckshot and flechette ammo. This effect will only apply when the projectiles hit the torso and not the limbs or the head. This change I think basically means that when you equip body armor, no shotgun will now one-tap you because I think with the MCS-880 and even with the 12M, they did just enough damage to reach 120 damage. So meaning that even with an armor plate, they could still one-tap you. But now if the the body armor gives you more protection against shotguns this probably means they can no longer one tap you meaning if you have people on the enemy team that run a shotgun you could just pick a sword with an armor plate and you will probably be able to kill them because they can't one shot you anymore i like this change because body armor just got stronger against shotgun while staying the same for all the other weapons now they also buffed the gvt you basically deal now more damage making the gun a consistent two shot up to 50 meters and then a consistent three shot after 50 meters very good change because the gvt is just such a useless weapon but i still think they should maybe add some more projectile speed because yes the damage is nice but the projectiles are so slow on this gun i don't know if the damage 
buffs enough to make the gun viable again. And then some more weapon basically bug fixes. But yeah, that's basically it. This season with the new patch, we get new recoil. Oh, new recoil in quotation marks because it's only visual recoil. We finally get headshot reduction, so they're no longer that OP on ARs and LMGs, but are finally worth it on SMGs. Our movement speed increases for the weaker SMGs. Some OP guns got turned down, but the armor now will protect you more effectively against shotgun users. So overall, I have to say it's a really nice patch and I wish we would get those patches more often. I have a feeling that over like the last few months, every time we got a patch, those patches didn't really do anything and the game still felt the same afterwards. But now with this patch, it actually feels like it's a new season, the gameplay is changing, it's a new experience and I really like this and I would love to see DICE continuing on this path forward by making changes that actually affect the game and requires people to play differently and test out new things because that's what season patches are for. So I love to see it. Props to DICE, they really did something great here. But yeah, now I would like to hear your opinion down below. What do you think of this patch? Do you like it? Do you hate it? And also, are you hyped for season 7? Are you happy that you can finally play the season tomorrow? Because I definitely know I am, even though I have to work. But yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like. And if you want to stay up to date for season 7 and all the stuff that's coming with it, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. As always, thank you so much for watching until the end. And I will see you in the next video.